Welcome to Absolute Comics. I'm back, everyone. Uh, long story short, this is the show that Sal and I produce every Tuesday at about 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, about that. We'll go with that. Uh, over at the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash comicstorian, where you can find us doing this live every week. It's then uploaded to both of our Patreons, and you can find it over at our channel the weekly poll slash absolute comics channel where you can find out all this information and get this video and have fun with it across there uh i am going to personally apologize for january because well no we took a couple days off because there wasn't a lot of news no it was um, very dry yeah it was, was very dry month in general and then i had sat, uh dan step in for me for that one i don't even remember what i was doing what was i doing dan you were busy i remember you were very busy yeah I don't remember. I w now but that's going to bug me. Well, I think I was supposed to be out of town, and then I wasn't out of town, so we decided to yeah. just, like, we'll just let him do it anyway. Where was I going to be, Dan? Dan, get your mic. Where was I going to be? I honestly <laughs> cannot remember for the life of me. Did you enjoy your time here with Sal, Dan? I did. I'm not sure if you released the video of that one, though. Oh, I should probably do that right now. Yeah, guys, uh, I'm Benny. I'm known as the Comic Story, and that is Sal from Comic Pop, and the voice in the sky is... Dan. You don't... Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't want to give you an intro, because I know you'd make your own <laughs> special intro, right, Dan? <laughs> So today's topic is going to be, we're going to talk about DC Metal 2. Uh, we're going to talk about the Batman 88 villain. We're going to talk about uh, Franklin Richards' new purpose in life, which is to annoy <laughs> the hell out of me and only idiots will like him. I'm not, I'm not calling people out, but whatever. Uh, we're also uh -huh. going to... Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're also going to talk about the Captain America. The no, nah, we won't talk about that one. Uh, but we will talk about the Harley Quinn movie name change and movie situation, which is going to be great. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, it could be kind of like a little bit, little bit all over the place, but we'll still have fun with it. So let's kick it off at the beginning with our comic book discussion, like we always do, Sal. Why don't you and Dan talk about Fantastic Four X Men One since Dan actually read it and I didn't, and I'll chime in with idiot remarks like I always do while sounds I get great. this other episode launched. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. Uh, yeah, X-Men Fantastic Four, it's by the Dodsons and Chip Zdarsky. Zdarsky steps in where you'd think like, oh man, we're going to get Hickman because obviously Hickman was like a Fantastic Four architect le like lately. Wouldn't it make more sense for him to do both this? But we got Zdarsky, which actually was kind of great because if you haven't read Marvel 2-in-1, Zdarsky wrote that. Best Fantastic Four series, you know, yet. Not ever, but like... Uh, uh wait, the Chip the Zdarsky one? Yeah, yeah. Marvel 2-in-1 by Zdarsky. He did, like, this incredible Oh, the 2-in-1. Okay. I thought I thought you said, like, F Fantastic Four by Chip Zdarsky. I'm like, did I miss something? No, no. 2-in-1 is great. That was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Well, he, and he wrote this X-Men Fantastic Four series. Oh, so, uh, okay. So, it, so it's great, and it's competent, and all the characters are terrific. Like, And what's amazing is, you know he's got to, like, cram all this stuff into this book, and yet he still manages to have breathing room, like, for the characters to actually interact and for it to be fun while also still serving a purpose. Basically, Xavier's like, I gotta fast track this timetable. I need Franklin Richards to be on Krakoa like now. Since the kid can like manipulate reality or shove us in a ball that is that makes us look like we're drawn by Rob Liefeld, like we need that kind of power on our team. Like, Wait, we're now. drawn by the Rob Liefeld? <laughs> it's a Heroes Reborn reference. It's oh no, like, I know, but still, yeah, that's funny. Franklin Richards, yeah, if, yeah. I, if I put you in this ball, it'll look like you're drawn by Rob Liefeld or Jim Lee. Um, I have a question for you and something related to Fantastic Four. I don't know. Oh. What is your opinion on Dan Slott's Fantastic Four? I dropped it after issue three or four. It's like terribly boring. Um, <laughs> I, the other problem was I think I would have dug it a lot if there was never a Marvel 2 in 1. Like that Marvel 2 in 1 series. I agree with you on that. Marvel 2 in 1 was great. And then when he launched Fantastic Four, I liked issue 1 and 2. Yeah. And like, and then it was like, okay, now we're... No, literally done. by issue three, I'm like, all right, well, I'm out. And it wasn't even like he did anything. There was no moment in there where I'm like, oh, he crossed a line. It was just general disinterest and, yeah. and, and, and money. I was just like, it ain't, it ain't worth it. And so I dropped it. And, and that's really a damn shame because I think for the last 10 years, we've been talking about how Marvel needs to have a Fantastic Four series. Like, we've been like, oh my god, I can't believe the Marvel's sidetracking the Fantastic Four just because Fox owns the franchise. Well, now it's all over, and we have a Fantastic Four series, and it's boring. I mean, for the record, I was the one that said I don't care if the Fantastic Four ever come back because I find the whole concept of them boring because everyone right. else does this stuff cooler. And everyone was like, no, 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 you don't understand. We need Fantastic Four. Um, and I'm going to look that real quick, but I'm pretty sure it's not even selling that well. Oh, I'm sure it isn't. Like, I'm sure it isn't just by virtue of the nature of the stories and the fact that, you know, I'm not buying it. 
I'm pretty sure it was issue three that the fake Fantastic Four showed up. Am I wrong? Yes. Okay, yes. that was when I fell off already. I was like, oh. Okay, yeah, the, fan so. the fake Fantastic Four like moved into the Baxter building while they were gone, and they moved to yep. Yancey Street, and I'm like, okay, this is boring. I don't care. Uh, in November, it was the 45th highest selling book with 36,000. Oh, 36, my God. 36,000. Uh, yeah. Hold That's on. Rough. Wait, wait. I, I got to do Fused or everyone yells at me because of the new system. Hold on. Yes. Uh, 48th sold. <laughs> oh, hey. Well. It went down. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, like, and I don't want to take pleasure in it because I, I want the series to go well. I have liked Dan Slott's work in the past. I think he would be a on-paper natural fit for Fantastic Four, and I think he's doing it proud. It's just also terribly boring. Um, but that is not the case with X-Men Fantastic Four from Chip Zdarsky, which is fun, and it's interesting. I'm He manages to bridge... Both the Marauder series and the X Men series and the Fantastic Four series, so all three of those into one book, and it feels like a cohesive thing. It doesn't feel like odd, all over the place or confusing. It doesn't. It doesn't not work. It works on every level, except for the art. I love the Dodsons, and I think that if they were only doing covers, it'd be friggin' immaculate. It's just, and it could be the coloring, could be the inking. I don't know, but like the art just isn't quite. Where it should, particularly when you're expect, like when you're reading all the X Men books, like all the art on the X Men books, for the most part, Fallen Angels, is excellent. <laughs> and, I'll agree with you on that, but I'm also gonna say Fallen Angels is good. I, Just to be that I guy, under, <laughs> I understand people's interest in it. And when I heard about the series, I thought I was gonna be interested in that one the most. I read the first issue and was like, oh, and. How quickly we forget. Like, no, I'm not How interested. quickly we forget. So, <laughs> I, I'm not interested in this series, so I just moved on. You're not but, You're uh, not wrong. When they announced all the X-Men books, I did House of X. I did, uh, what was it, House of X and Powers of X. Yes. Um, and then when they announced the new books, I'm like, all right, so I'll read X-Men and Fallen Angels probably, probably because X-Men has the core team, and I like X-23 and Psylocke, and then Fallen Angels. I think issue two, I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I just said it got that, worse, so I was like, ah, thank God I jumped off. Yeah, no, it's true. X Force got better though, uh, for me. I, everyone really digs X Force, and I don't blame them because it's like it's a dope looking book. Uh, but uh, but now I'm finally like, oh, I see what you're doing with it. Cool, Ben Percy's yeah. right on. Good job. Um, but this series is good. Uh, the only problem is, and it's it really like what highlights it. I would be like, yeah, this looks like a Dodson book. There's no complaints here. Is the Cerebro helmet? The helmet needs to look either alien and odd and scary or cool and it's neither it just looks like it just looks dumb <laughs> it just and looks dumb he just looks like a douche like it's just a stupid ball on his head and it's like not consistent in the terms of like how of the of the actual you know construction of the helmet it's like i got the x over the eyes like cyclops but then after after the circle i don't know what to do and i'm like oh, I, well, I for one i like and i, I know i've been hating on on Hickman yeah, you're not a big general. X-Men fan right now. Yeah, No, at all. And Hickman's just making it worse and worse and worse. And I personally think that it's just a bunch of idiots like Hickman. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was the guy that. who like... like um, yeah, yeah, no, I'm joking around about that. But in the general, uh, I don't like what he's been doing at all. And ever since the first design, I was like... The the whole th I don't that looks dumb. I don't <laughs> like that. I've never liked that. Right. I've, if you look back all the way to the early announcements of Dawn of X and House of X and all this crap, yep. I was saying I think with Dan on the original comic book review show before we bumped me off of it, that I was like, this looks dumb. I don't know why he's got a globe on his head. They explained right. it, and I'm like, it's still dumb. It doesn't. Right. There's no reason. <laughs> I I'm fine with it, but also like I know that they're doing a thing. Like they're. They're clearly doing it to make you not think that there are multiple Xaviers, whatever. The idea here is, in this series, you may like this the most out of all the X titles because Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four are like, hey, X-Men, you're a bunch of creeps, and this is yeah. dumb. Yeah. And it's like, hey, someone finally said it out loud. And it's like, the only people who could probably stop them. And that's really cool. <laughs> I like that a lot. Although Reed doesn't look like a hero in this series, he is equally responsible for, you know, Machiavellian actions and looks like a jackass a couple times, but, like, him outright calling Xavier out and being like, yo, this is all weird, you're trying to kidnap my son, pass. I'm like, <laughs> pass. Hard pass. <laughs> hard pass on that one. And I'm like, right on, that's great. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, but, you know, it, it's cool. It's a good series, maybe. Uh, the first issue got me. The last page reveal 
kept me. So we'll see where it goes from here. All right. Uh, next up, let's talk about we'll talk about the next comic. Then we'll talk about the Scott Snyder big announcement tomorrow, which we think we know what it is. Batman oh. 88's new villain, the designer, is going to break up Batman and Catwoman's romance potentially. Um, while I see that happening, one did not did not foresee it happening so soon. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, two. What we don't even have the Batman Catwoman book yet. So is, is this just once again to, to, like DC's like Tom King? We're gonna we're gonna do our own thing over here. We're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do Batman Catwoman breaking up. If you could be on play play ball, that'd be great. And, and Tom King's like, no, I got a whole <laughs> book about it. So we're gonna do that. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Um, That's really yeah, because you can tell. I mean, I think Jorge Heman has dropped a page from his upcoming stint on the Batman series, and it looks like they're breaking up in that page. Yeah. And by the way, gorgeous page. Thank God he's on this book. But I'm like, already? You I just got them together. <laughs> I mean, because like, like the whole point of Tom King's 85 issue run was at the end of the whole thing. Two years. They're together. They're happy. They can make it work. And if anything came out of Tom King's run that was incredible, th- 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 I would be like, let's at least keep that. It yeah. wasn't the Alfred Pennyworth death that we're getting an RIP issue for. It was no. the stupid marriage. Keep that in. Like, come on. Can you... Now, can you... W- there is a Batman Catwoman series from Tom King coming out. Right. Which is celebrate. It's not going to be about these two ex-lovers who are going to try and make their crime fighting work despite their relationship falling apart. It's clearly going to be about them being together. You know what would be even better? If that 12-issue series is about them getting back together for the third time in two Oh, years. my God. <laughs> I don't know what would drive me more crazy, that this is a reconcile issue before a crisis undoes all of it, or if this was out of continuity and it's like an alternate reality version of Batman and Catwoman being together and having a kid. Right. Oh, like how Scott Snyder got to do his ending with Last Day on Earth. Or last exactly. Night. Yeah. King's like, hey, how come he got to end it? I want to do my ending. <laughs> there was, there was, and there were and it has to be 12 panels. issues and it has to be a maxi. Uh, three Naturally. issues of which will be nothing but uh, no text at all. It'll be Batman having a veggie platter while talking to. <laughs> well, he, well, it must have nine panels per page. And right. in each panel, Batman must say cat and Catwoman must say bat. And they can do that pretty much for the first six or seven issues. <laughs> and we'll wrap it up with like and then we'll wrap it up with a moment that like all my fans will say is totally awesome and then six months down the line we'll, we'll admit eh, that actually wasn't that as awesome as I thought <laughs> I will say I love Mr. Miracle though I, like, all I, did, aside, I, I I still think Mr. Miracle should have been nine issues uh, yeah. then you wouldn't have gotten nearly as much funky Flashman in it <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, it was, it was fun I, I really enjoyed Mr. Miracle yeah. I, but the, between that, between Vision, even Sheriffs of Babylon, um, I love Tom King's writing. I just feel like he needs to write his 12 issues, and then an editor needs to come in and go, uh, nine. Eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will say, I needed every page of Vision. For me, Vision was, like, almost perfection. Uh, Mr. Miracle, I'd have to read it again, but I, as I remember, I didn't, I didn't feel like anything was extraneous. I was just like... It, really for me, cool. it was around issues 9 and 10, where they were kind of half revealing what's actually going on, and right. then leaving it up to him to decide what's going on. Yeah. And there was a lot of just like, we'll do a nine-panel spread of the birth, and then we'll do a nine-panel spread of him <sighs> sitting down, for, and we'll showing his reaction. And like, Yeah, you got me there. That's the, fair. Like, a lot of that was to me was just like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although there, there is a reason to, to pour over those pages, and it's because Mitch... Jared's is great. Oh yeah, no, the art is amazing. I mean, yeah. it, and and it works very well in trade format because I don't have to wait for the next issue. Oh. But I can only imagine freaking yeah. out if issue nine was nothing but the artwork and no text. You know what I mean? Like, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I will. I, I gotta say, Which, for the record, I think is part of the Batman Tom King problem. I think. Oh, I personally feel now that it's month. all out. It when it because you know they're gonna do a Tom King omnibus. If oh, yeah. it, I. I will eat my shoe, but I could see this being revered as one of the best Batman runs only in trade. How often have we heard stories where shit, 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 shit. Oh my God, it's amazing in trade. Yeah. People crapped on Sandman when it was coming out. Like, yeah. <laughs> People thought because, Watchmen well, problem, was overrated. Because even I, even I cried foul at the Tom King run because I was like, this is taking forever. Yes. But when it's a trade, it's not taking forever. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, no, I could definitely see Tom King's run being on many lists you know, in the next, like, 2022, 2023, where they're like, 
the top 10 Batman runs of all time. And they're yeah. like, well, I oh, just 100%. sat down and read all, I read every single Tom King issue and you wouldn't believe how, how perfectly it flowed together. And it's like, you know what? He's actually really good at that. Like, yeah. he is really good at connecting through lines and calling back to things. It's just like, when it comes to the things that happened in that series, I was like, who gives a shit? Like, I was out. Volume two, I was out. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see it going. Uh, someone just said that there's an interview where Tom King said that the editors wanted Alfred dead. Yes, he did not want Alfred to die. He he what? wanted it to be he wanted it to be, it to be Clayface, and the editors went, "Oh, but what if Alfred really did die? Imagine the sales." <laughs> and Tom maybe King was like, "Maybe that's a well, part of why. Maybe that's a part of why he ended. He got kicked off the book so early because he was disagreeing with what they wanted him to do. If if he is openly saying the editorial made Alfred get actually killed." That says to me that there was clashing in a big bad way. I mean, the the fact is, if there was no, if there was perfect harmony between those two groups, he would have gotten his hundred issues. Yeah. No, you're running so right. That was my argument since the beginning when they announced that at like issue seventy, where I was like, look, you can agree or disagree on the Tom King run, whatever you want. At this point, yeah. let it finish. That's how yeah. I felt too. Because I was yeah, like, like, I'm not already not buying it. At least that the people who are enjoying it buy it. Yeah. Like finish the run at this point. But yeah. Yeah. I, huh. All right, well, it makes, I mean, it makes sense that there was some editorial issues. Otherwise, like oh, yeah. you said, it would have would have been fine. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next one then because I am on a bit of a time crunch today because uh, I have to go ball my eyes out at a dog rescue <laughs> as I return my dog. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I know. I, 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 it's how I cope, Sal. Bad jokes. I know. Well, it makes me sad too. <laughs> I was so happy. Anyway. Uh, I was happy. It'll be never again. I know. I'll never be happy in that way again. <laughs> wow! In that way, see, I, I specified that. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's very dark. <laughs> uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's big announcement is tomorrow. <laughs> I wonder. This is, this is the most. This is probably one of the worst kept comic secrets in a very long time. Well, they're the, they themselves are tweeting pictures from the damn thing. Come on, on. <laughs> there's ads for it in comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But they just haven't called it what it is yet. And I didn't realize this, so there was, yeah, they're going to make the announcement tomorrow. I'm like, they haven't named the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. Although we've had, we, we have speculation. We've heard what it might be named, what it probably is going to be called. So What is that? What do you got? Death Metal. Oh, that'd be cool. Because DC yes. Metal 2 just wouldn't, like, they tried that with Curse of the White Knight. It's not working out so well. I renamed nah. all my White Knight videos to White Knight 2. That's working out better, so... <laughs> oh, then Curse of the White... Yeah. I couldn't even remember what the damn thing was called. Aside, Curse of the White Knight is excellent. But I couldn't remember what the hell the damn thing was called, so White oh, Knight yeah. 2 was the way to call it. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. I think that's part of the problem with White Knight 2. Plus, White Knight 2 isn't getting anywhere near the marketing White Knight 1 got. I can't believe that, by the way. Like, there, the book it has is more incredible. spin-offs, though. You got like huh? the Edmund Wayne. You got the Mister Freeze book. Like, there's there's more tie-ins to White Knight, you know, than than there were to the last one. It's really weird. It looks like they're trying to expand the universe and make it its own kind of Elseworlds thing. But All at right. the same time, they're like, oh, we forgot to advertise it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it shows. Uh, yeah. I wonder how the sales were on that. Uh, I I don't know, I got the comic card pulled up. I pull, oh, go look at that now. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at White Knight too. Curse of uh, the White Knight. You got to look under C. Yeah, but, uh, I think it, I think cleverly it is still called Batman at least. So yeah, oh, not, they both have been called Batman. So which is that will guarantee a certain number. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, Dan's got something. Hold on. Oh, great. I want to chime in uh, mentioning that when Scott Snyder tweeted about it, he actually used the hashtag "worst kept secret." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even he guess. knows. Well, it could be that he he was like, well, we'll just announce it. And DC's like, let's turn it into a secret. Because like, it seems like every boneheaded move comes from upstairs. Like All the creators are like, I got this great idea. We're going to have this th- scene. It's going to be really tense. You think Alfred dies, and then no. And it's like, the, the editor's like, and no, how about really he dies? And it's like, you know, hey, I got this idea for a sequel to, Death Me- to, to, to Dark Knight's Metal. More dragons and crap, who cares? And it's like, what if we kept it a secret? Like, <laughs> I love your voice for DC upstairs. It's like well, 90s, I don't know what they, like <laughs> extreme metal or something. Hey guys, you also want to hey, get some Mountain Dew? Uh, no, actually, they should say G Fuel because that's our sponsor. <laughs> oh, they need um, to tie up with D- with G Fuel. G Fuel needs to have like a like a Dark Knight's Metal too. Oh, like, that'd be so sweet. epic! What would it taste like? 
Right, like, oh my god, like the hydration formula was like the drowned, like the, you know, the G Fuel that laughs or what, I don't know. The G Fuel that laughs. Can we get that made, please, G Fuel? Right. <laughs> uh, Curse of the White Knight, the last time that I, I got the October numbers, because apparently in November they didn't release an issue. Uh, <sighs> number four came out in uh, October, okay. and it was number 20 on sales with 63,000 sold. Okay, that's almost, that's more than half better <laughs> Than uh, than Fantastic Four. Yeah. <laughs> I did like Fantastic Four is not ranked too poorly. The other books like Shazam and Captain Marvel are all beneath it. So, oh, I believe it. <laughs> so, well, okay. like, yeah, if there's one book that's being marketed less than Curse of the White Knight, it's Shazam. <laughs> I know. Well, because they're like, what is it? Is it ever going to come out? Did you see right? that? By the way, um, what's a fabric? Fabro? The who's the one that's doing the? Uh, Three Jokers artwork. Oh, Fabic. Yes. Fabic, yep. He tweeted out that the, here's the book. We're just waiting for upstairs to give us the go-ahead to finally release it. Oh. And he said straight up that they had to make changes. Yes, I did and see then, the end. Yeah. He's like, yeah. we made the ending even more awesome. I'm like, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. So. That sucks. Uh, for those asking, we're using Comic Cron as our sales marker. It's not 100% accurate, but gives you a it, general idea of how it beats things. nothing. Yeah, ex which is what else we have. So. <laughs> yeah, because those are our options. DC Metal 2, I'm excited. I like DC Metal 1. Uh, I will say, I, as much as that sold well, I am a little curious as to why DC decided to do another metal book, simply because you either loved it or you hated it, because it was so yeah. all over the place. Not everyone liked metal. No. I'm that kind of a guy. I loved metal. You know? Sure, yeah. I br I bought every issue, and it looked really cool, but I fully admit that, like, it was a little... Uh, the problem now is that, like, you just had this, I don't know, 39-issue run of Justice League where every issue was the biggest thing ever, and now Snyder's going to come back and take that same crew and do the biggest thing <laughs> ever. So it's like, I can't imagine anybody who's just hyped for this... But I, I, the reason why I think they're doing it now as opposed to like, let's just kick the can down the road, do Metal 2 like in a year or two, is because I think Snyder might leave DC before 2021. I could see and that. I think, and I think he's like, we got to get this in now because otherwise I'm never going back. Yeah. No, I, it, well, it's just like, how many times has he said it's his last run with Greg Capullo? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the last three times I think was the last time. <laughs> Like, like they're, they're basically doing a reunion tour three months after they just did the last time ever. Yeah. Can, I, <laughs> can I just pitch something? I want Snyder and Capullo to leave DC and do an epic 40-issue run of Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would, be, uh, that would be dope. I would yep. buy the hell out of that run. Are you kidding me? Uh, just blow everyone's minds. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think Snyder's leaving, and I think they were like, well, we we're going to do a crisis to kind of usher in 5G anyway. It might as well be metal too. What if this is the crisis? Yeah. What if this, this is, is the, the I think it is the crisis. I think that's the idea. Is that like they were gonna have two? I think they were gonna have a crisis, but they didn't have a plan. After and after Heroes in Crisis, they were like, "Oh my God, we better be really careful about what we do." And uh, and Snyder's like, "Well, I want to do this metal thing," and they were like, "That's that's it. We'll just do that." At the end <laughs> of it, make them all old. Do you think at the end of this they're gonna kill the Dark Multiverse? I hope so. <laughs> I. I feel like that's already kind of run its course. The Dark yeah. Universe. Like, it was fun, and then the tales were okay. Right. And now you still got, like, the Batman Who Laughs running around, and he's oh infecting everyone. And, he's and then the we cover got Earth 3 book. came back. It's like, yeah. how many evil versions of the... Like, I when they brought back Crime Syndicate, I was like, you just... Yeah. You dullified the entire point of the Dark Multiverse. Like, I thought we pretty much... Good multiverse, dark multiverse. Nope, Earth three still evil. <laughs> like what? right, like what? <laughs> but just that one. Like is Earth well at least? And maybe if they wanted to like argue that like the Anti Monitor shielded Earth three, he's and it really is like the prime Earth of the dark multiverse or something. Like tie it in somehow. I don't know, but like yeah. it, it doesn't really make it doesn't really it doesn't really track. Uh, but at the same time, uh, yeah. Well, the the problem is we never really did anything too interesting with the dark multiverse after metal it was just kind of like we have these we have these dark what ifs and the, the dark what ifs have been the best use of it they tried those new superheroes they were all intertwined into the dark multiverse like sideways oh, yeah. and none of that panned out yeah the dark matter characters yeah, yeah. that didn't pan out uh <laughs> but uh but no i i, I don't know i i 
I think there's, I, I would not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, I wouldn't destroy the Dark Multiverse because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. I think that, like, we, at least you and I probably liked some of those What If books they put out. Yeah. Like, some no, of those were kind of No, I, I thought neat. they were okay. Uh, I'd say the only one I really disliked was the artwork and the Teen Titans one. And I, didn't I felt bother. that the Infinite Crisis was kind of pointless. Infinite Crisis, I was like, what? It was kind of neat. It was a, it was a fun return to that period. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I yeah. yeah. Uh, last comic book thing before we move on then. They've announced that they've, they've shown the preview of the free comic book day. Wally West is blue. Everyone's <sighs> speculating that it's Dr. Manhattan. I yeah. don't think that's true because he's literally going through the multiverse right now. What do you think? Uh, he has like a thing on his forehead. So I, I remember people saying like, why are they turning Wally West into Dr. Manhattan? And I'm like, are they? I don't really know. Right. I will say this. That cover... That cover makes me not want to read any more DC for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, that cover represents for me the reason that there are Marvel fanboys and DC fanatics. Because like that kind of crap where it's like, it's a flash and he's blue and he's like, and, like, and, dar- and, and the Batman who laughs is there. And it's like all this stuff that you kind of remember, but like some of it you really like, what am, what am I even looking at? And there's no context. And DC is like, you're welcome, mic drop. Like, that for me is like, none of that is exciting. Well, just like the fact that everyone's like, let's talk to Manhattan Wally West. And I'm like, no one said that. He's blue. Congratulations, you must have a huge YouTube channel because you just made up a whole bunch of bullshit and <laughs> people are going to click the hell on that thing. <laughs> Wally West is Dr. Manhattan. Big bold letters, circle hold on, and arrow. Your, oh, hold on. I, I actually did not even think about who some... What, let's see if anybody YouTuber did that Like with the big... I'm going to look this up. I'm going to look... Yeah, please. Google. Is Wally, Wally West Dr. Manhattan? West, Dr. Ma- did it, who did it? Who did it? I don't Someone know, honestly. Did. I really don't know. I'm not like... I, what I did culture not comics... Okay. They did it. Yeah, D- DC, they, they can take it. DC making Flash Dr. Manhattan proves Watchmen exploitation has gone too far. You don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, and Tevya. Tevya did it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I know, he's, I, I know he's very upset about this <laughs> thing. He doesn't know if it's real or not. But. Tevya, you came up in the search, man. How does that make you feel? <laughs> no, no, I mean that like congratulate. Cause I know you are you are a mover and shaker in the industry. Yeah, what, what, once you start actually coming up in the algorithm, that's a good thing. Yeah, coming up. <laughs> you're but, right uh, below. You're right below what culture? <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah, he's gonna I get hired. Even, you weren't on there. I wasn't on there. <laughs> I didn't write. I didn't write anything. That's because when I hear something that's like insane or bogus, I just ignore it. <laughs> I don't like write it down. Um, but who knows? I mean, the fact is, like, they could be like, oh, no, like, the, the ending of Doomsday Clock is a, is a closed loop, and that's really Wally West. Like, they could, they could ruin everything. Yeah. And the fact that, like, they didn't care about Doomsday Clock suggests to me that, like, they probably will deliberately sabotage the ending of Doomsday Clock to make this thing. Um, I don't know, man, but I'm not excited about this free comic book day issue. I will read it, uh, and I'll try to keep an open mind, but, like, that cover, I'm like, get out of here. Ugh. Right. It's just bizarre. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next big, big topic. Birds of Prey. Uh, for those who have not seen it, we are going to probably be talking minor spoilers. I don't think we're going to do anything major. But nah. be prepared. This is an open, free-form discussion. In my opinion, like many recent DC movies, there's almost nothing to spoil. There was no right. surprises, no Easter eggs, nothing. Yeah, like- I was a little surprised by the ending. There, there, yeah. There's something that happens to the villain where I was like, surprised. Yeah, but like what I'm saying is like there's really not like Harley Quinn is being chased by Black Mask that is in the trailer, right? That She'll is probably your plot. beat him. Yeah. <laughs> the birds of prey are probably going to appear in the movie, N- or the movie. not, as the case may be. But <laughs> well, uh, well, they may only appear or become a team, say, like in the last eight minutes. Yeah, but so, that being said, what did you? I, in my opinion, I thought it was a great movie. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I do find uh, a couple of comments people are making. One, that it's super feminist. I'm like, it's about a woman breaking up with a guy and showing the world that she doesn't need him. Yes, there's a little feminist behind that, but if, if, I have to, if you have to come to me and go, that is our feminist message, I'll take that one. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty tame. Right, uh, versus like the extreme feminists where they're like, kill all men. I'll take the <laughs> broke up with a boyfriend you can get, out, you can get by on your own. Sorry. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, 
that would be like, I don't know, that'd be like saying, well, I don't know. It, it, for me, that concept of like, there, it's a movie with primarily women in it. That must be feminist. Like, it's, it's the same kind of like bogus nonsense that like Hollywood has when they're like, if you have more than three main black leads, you have a black movie. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's a totally different marketing like bracket. Like, what? It's why I, Terry Fitzgerald is white in Spawn, by the way, yeah. the movie. Like, just because they were like, well, no, we're trying to make a movie that's, like, a superhero for this demographic. If we, if Terry Fitzgerald is black, that means that, like, there's too many black people in this movie. And it's like, that's racist. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to say, like, oh, a movie about a woman who makes friends with women, and these women are in this story, is a feminist movie. Like, that's not implicit. Like, that's not a given. It's, it's just Supposedly, these characters doing something. Ewan McGregor uh, went great. ahead. But apparently he said it was a feminist movie, and that's where a lot of people are getting this from. Right on. But, okay. Like, watching the movie, I didn't see anything in there. Like, did it? Batwoman, I felt, had a more aggressive feminist message where it's like, oh, make it for a woman. Forget oh, the, the show? Men. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, that I'm one like, is. Yeah. Harley Quinn was tame as hell. <laughs> Comparatively, absolutely. Uh, no, I, I, I agree uh, that it is not a overtly feminist movie. I think if it's if you get any feminist overtones, either you're looking for them or you're deriving them. And like maybe that's yeah. good for you. Maybe it's like, hey, I felt something different. Like that's good for that's good for me. Uh, the movie itself is just like a fun little adventure about these characters who do stuff. Like th- there's nothing feminist about that. It's just kind of cool. Um, I think I my biggest it. complaint about it, uh, openly complaint, was that Harley Quinn doesn't remind me of Harley Quinn too much. I, I, I Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, and Suicide Squad. Felt like a little like Harley Quinn, but I, but like, okay. Yeah. This to me didn't really feel like she had her Harley Quinn moments. Yes. But her accent, her appearance, she didn't wear any traditional Harley Quinn stuff. No. Nah. That would be my biggest complaint. That's fair. That's a fair complaint, I think, uh, because she doesn't really, eh, she's there. She does her thing. Uh, I, I would argue if I, if I wanted to play devil's advocate, I would say something like, she is trying to find a new identity in this movie. So True. maybe the inconsistencies are deliberate. And I, I've, having talked through it the other day with Tiffany, like I think that this movie is more deliberate than people are giving it credit for when it comes to story and character arcs. So maybe the fact that Harley doesn't really act too much more like Harley than even in Suicide Squad could indicate that it's actually a deliberate choice made by the actor, which would be really cool. That being said, I felt like it was more, there was a sequence uh, in the, in the uh, precinct uh, at the, um, in the uh, police impound. And I was like, oh my God, you're just doing Deadpool. Please just be your own thing. And the rest of the movie was, but like the scene where Harley Quinn gets high on cocaine and Hollywood seems to think that cocaine is like a super thing that like makes you powerful and stuff. Like it is, it is not, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, but Deadpool did the same thing, like where Deadpool does cocaine and like and it like makes him faster and more interesting. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Like, it, I'm shocked they didn't play the Popeye theme when she like breathed in all the cocaine and then like was <laughs> more able to beat all the bad guys. Um, I love that somebody complained most, about like, that. They were like, uh, how do you feel about the fact that they Mary sued her into the ability to beat everyone? And I'm like, have you read ah. anything with Harley Quinn in it? Like, that's her whole thing. That's her whole thing. She, yeah. She's she's fast. I don't know. Like, I'll tell you this. I don't care. Because yeah. when she has the one woman assault on the precinct with her gun, it's so well choreographed and it's so fun to watch. No complaints. I loved when the sprinklers came out. I'm like, oh god, we're doing one of those water fights. Okay, here we go. <laughs> like, <laughs> and sure enough, they did. And like, they were like swinging around. The only thing that I was missing, if you're gonna go full tilt, make a DC Deadpool, have Harley Quinn look at the screen a little more and be like, water fight. Like, here's the scene. Here's the scene where I slide a lot more. You know. I, I, but yeah. otherwise, yeah, I, I. It was cool. I just overall thought it was just a fun. I was just enjoying myself the entire time. I was like, oh, I was too. Fun. I enjoyed the movie. Uh, the, I, the only other big issue I have is the Cassandra Kane character. They should have given her any other name, because now totally. you can't effectively use Cassandra Kane ever. Well, you can, but just not in this, just not in this universe. Yeah, the, it's. I know she's a character that was probably never going to get used, but right. she's also not such a char- such a popular character that you had to use her name. That's why I don't understand. She also has never had anything to do with the Birds of Prey. No. Also, the Birds of Prey are barely in the movie because you get two out of the three. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I know, for, those, I, well, for those who are yeah. wondering, the Birds of Prey did initially start with just Black Canary and Huntress. That was, if you look no, it up, it was Black Canary and Barbara first, and then they got Huntress, I think, right? No, no. I, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but when I remember looking it up a couple months ago, it started, Dan will go, Google it real fast. Yeah. It I, started but, as Black Canary and Huntress, and then Barbara came in later, and that's when they got famous. And I think that was the Gail Simone run. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it requires Huntress, Canary, and or Batgirl. That's I'm going to step in. Birds of Prey in 1995. Initially, the two heroines, Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, and Dinah Lance, Black Canary. Okay. So but what, what I was getting at is Batgirl is the key person you would think when you hear Barbara, uh, Birds of Prey. You need Barbara Gordon in that, in that story. I was like, because in my head, I was like, oh, she's the one that popularized it. But she even yeah. started it, so... <laughs> right. No, I mean, like, you need you need Barbara Gordon, she starts it, and you must have Black Canary, because otherwise, why are they called birds of prey? <laughs> there are no birds. A huntress is not a bird. A Black Canary is not a bird. It is not even a bird of prey. <laughs> it is um, a prey bird. It is a bird that is hunted by raptors, but not, in fact, a bird of prey. A huntress is a person. <laughs> Oh like, uh, no no she's crossbow killer, right? I, <laughs> great moment, but that was that's funny as hell. I loved all of that. Yeah, but um, yeah, but you and I, I think we need before if if we're gonna keep this like you know kind of brief, we need to address your biggest complaint about this movie, which I can't believe. I was getting that to I it. I honestly didn't even think like I can't believe I didn't think of it. Like I was just like when I saw your thing, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> Benny completely nailed it. Oh, like, what, what the, the problem is titling? Yeah. So I put out a tweet. I'm assuming that's the one you're referencing. Um, I tweeted out, like, the more I think about it, the more the Birds of Prey title makes no sense to me. If you aren't a comic goer and you see Birds of Prey, you're going to think crappy horror movie. And if you are a fan of, of the Birds of Prey, you're going to think Batgirl. Neither right. of which happens in this movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, like, I get that you can't do Batgirl I guess. I don't know why, but okay. <laughs> well, because, like, it, it requires... The reality is, I'm full of crap because, like, I would have thought you'd need more time to art to ex establish who Black Canary is, but you didn't. No, and I, I, would, I thought they did a great job just giving us enough info and letting that us was go. Great. Yeah. No, I think so too. I agree. Huntress and too. I was like, yeah, Huntress. They even used the real Helen Bertinelli origin, and I was yeah. like, wow. I, I really I loved I loved everybody in that movie. I thought they did a great job. Cassandra Kane, notwithstanding, I thought the actor did great with what she had. She, she literally could have been replaced with a tape recorder. Tiffany had an even better suggestion. She said the hyena should have swallowed the diamond, and then that's the MacGuffin that they're trying right. to kill the hyena, and that's like like. But then it doesn't have Harley's emotional through line. But like, if the hyena swallowed the diamond, then she would have like a reason to keep the hyena around. She'd be like protecting it. She'd be like really deathly like desperate to keep it a lot. You know, like there's a lot going on there, and you don't have to like besmirch the Cassie Kane character and turn her into a different character altogether. I still can't. I still can't. Like I, Black Canary is pretty much Black Canary. The Huntress I, is Huntress. Harley Quinn, yes. as much as I don't think I don't like Margot Robbie's portrayal of her, is Harley Quinn. Yes. Like, I just don't like the portrayal. That doesn't the, the character's still the exact thing. Even, even Black Mask. Black Mask. He was great. He was amazing. I, for those that don't know, Black Mask has been portrayed in multiple different ways. He, like ruthless evil gangster, but also over the top, likes all the rich stuff. Uh my only complaint about Black Mask, my only complaint, they didn't yeah. say even a single line about the mask. He just had it eventually. <laughs> he just had it. Uh, my complaint is the mask was comic book ac well, comic book accurate in terms of it looks like it does in Under the Red Hood. Right. Uh the problem it, it is the worst part though. As he's revealing the mask, they could have easily just done a line of like, all these clowns want to take over Gotham. I guess you got like, you know, when in Rome. I know. <laughs> yeah, you could have had that. Instead, he just puts it on. My only complaint was it's too accurate. It looked goofy. Oh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, I thought, it, well, you know what the problem is? Because like the black mask that, I, that, he, that they're basing that off of is like obviously from the games and from the, the, the Under the Red Hood comic slash animated movie. For me... It needs to be like heavy, like it's got to be like a like a biker helmet kind of mask. Yeah, it it looked like a rubber mask that he just kind of threw it on, did. and uh, and so otherwise I was like that's cool. Like he at least wore it. Yeah, 
you know, You're not that's, wrong. Yeah. that's pretty dope. He wore the mask. Because ha- that was also one of my biggest complaints when we saw the trailers. I'm like, is he going to wear the damn mask? Like, I was certain he wasn't. You can't black mask and not wear the damn mask. No. I like Victor Zaz. I thought Victor Zaz was handled very well. Considering- I have no complaints. You want to you turn Victor Zaz into a woman or make him upside down or what? I don't care. Like, Zaz is such a throwaway villain for me. Oh, he like, definitely you could literally is, do I- anything. I like that they gave him personality, though, and they explained they him a little bit. Like, because he is such a throwaway villain. He reminds me That's of, like, back in the day of the old Batman stuff, they'd always have that intro villain that yes. was, like, he would defeat... And then right. that was, oh, this is Batman. Here's the real villain. <laughs> I, that's, that's how Zaz felt to me, the throwaway villain that we could use. And that's what he was. I liked it. Yes. And they, like, because Zaz is a character that is there to service the, the character arc for Black Mask, which is great. Like, that's fine. Yeah. And if you're going to marginalize any of Batman's rogues gallery, use, use Zaz, please. Yeah. But then they were like, oh, and also he does the cutting thing like in the comics. Like, he's more Zaz than Zaz was in Batman Begins. Yeah. And it was like, that's cool, way to go. Like, that that's, works for me. Hey, and you even threw us a bone by making him the Zaz from the comics. Yeah. Uh, that worked great. Uh, um, I yeah. liked that. I, I, I do, I get why they didn't do it, but I wish we had gotten some kind of Joker in that, like even yeah. as a backer, just to show us what Joker this was, because we're as all I wondering what's happening with Joker now. In, in for me, season. that was kind of the, the that was the biggest like frustrating part for me was Joker. Um, she, Harley keeps saying it throughout the whole thing, like Joker and I broke up, and for real this time, we don't see it, we don't really think, we we don't really buy it from the portrayal, and I get the impression from these characters and particularly this universe that like they break up all the time so for me like where's the stakes like how does it how does it feel more real and don't tell me it's because harley blew up the ace chemicals plant because that's what she did after she got dumped yeah like that there wasn't enough for me to buy her emancipation after that happened you could turn your brain off and move on with the story but for for the most part with joker and harley's like relationship falling apart I just didn't feel it. And as I understand it, they did have a body double who dressed like the Leto Joker. Okay. I'm not going to... I thought there was scene. something like that that they pulled I saw out. A, I, we saw a picture of him, like, throwing her stuff out the window. And I'm like, where's that? I wanted to see them make fun of Jared Leto, how they didn't even ask him to come back. Um, <laughs> but but uh, I'm glad they didn't, because the other thing about it is, if anything... Like, let's say this movie did really well, which, of course, it didn't. Um, you had the ability to kind of, like morph it a little bit to go like oh whatever you know like yeah this came out of the out of the Ayer universe with that joker but like we're just gonna say it's this joker now like we're gonna just make a new joker and because we didn't show him in this movie it literally could be any joker it doesn't matter right which you know is lazy and it's hollywood but like they're gonna do it anyway so whether you complain about it or not is relevant <laughs> so, so you know, i guess I, yeah no, I guess the last thing we have to talk about when it comes to this movie is the big elephant in the room. I know you heard they've changed the name. They've changed the name. They Edge of Tomorrowed it. <laughs> Wait, Edge of Tomorrow did that? Yeah, remember Edge of Tomorrow, that amazing sci-fi movie with Tom Cruise? Yeah, or the repeat in time over and over and over. Yeah, the slogan, it was it used to be Edge of Tomorrow, and then when you saw the trailer, it was Live, Die, Repeat, and they'd show that over and over again. After the movie tanked in its opening weekend they started to call it in all the marketing after the fact, Live, Die, Repeat. Because they thought the Edge of Tomorrow title was too esoteric or something. And it's like, what's a Groundhog Day? Like, that's not the reason this movie didn't do well. Yeah, okay? Exactly. Yeah. Like, so, and it didn't I, obviously work. Well, what blows my mind about the Harley Quinn name change is yeah. this, this one was the most obvious name you should have gone with. Totally. And I hear everyone's like, and whenever I say that in like these podcast stuff, someone in the chat normally goes, well, yeah, Margot Robbie wanted to do the longer name as an homage to the older movies that she enjoys. And I'm just thinking about head, I'm like, and what idiot in corporate suits said, sure, let's go with that, even though Harley Quinn is the last word. I counted. It's 10 words in. I know. <laughs> well, because there's words like fantabulous and emancipation in that title. Right. Uh, it, it's 10 yeah. words in. No movie outlet is going to go. They're just birds of prey. Birds of Prey. Yeah. And then you go, shitty horror movie. 
That's right. <laughs> well, it, because like here's the thing: hardcore audience. If you're trying to capitalize on the hardcore comic book audience, they're gonna hate it because it ain't the birds of prey. If you're yeah. gonna try and capitalize on the, the the noob who doesn't know who the birds of prey are, they're not gonna go because who the hell are the birds of prey? You have to call it Harley Quinn the and the birds of prey. That's the name of the movie. Yeah. Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. It's called Harley Quinn colon Birds of Prey. They should have just called it Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey because who gives a crap? Uh, and then they should have told Margot Robbie on the Criterion Collection, we'll put the stupid title you wanted on the cover or something. Like, okay? Like, the, um, you know what? We'll title the director's cut version that. Well, you not know? A, you know, it's not even just that. Let's look at the history of the recent DC movies, right? Right. You had Justice League, yep. Aquaman. Yep. Joker. Wonder Shazam. Woman. All single word Shazam. names yep. that are just the hero. Then it goes, Birds of Prey and the Emancipation Fatabulate blah, 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 Harley Quinn. Like, uh-huh. whose idea was this? Well, and, Even Wonder Woman. And, and, and hey, hey. Wonder Woman is Wonder Woman 1984. Like, <laughs> yeah, and that, that sells it. Oh, it's Wonder Woman, and I think it's set in 1984. <laughs> it's all you need. There's no thinking involved. And yeah, and the marketing for this movie, such that it was, was was occasionally an image of Harley Quinn and a bunch of folk. Yeah. Just a gaggle of people I don't recognize. Bunch of people you, you don't recognize. None of the costumes are accurate. So you're like, and I'm, fi- I'm fine that they didn't have any no- recognizable costumes. I'm, I'm actually okay with that. But if you don't have those costumes, you can't put these people into your trailer. Because what is a bird of prey? Like, what it, is this? Like, who are the birds of prey? Is that a team? Yeah, <laughs> Huntress is the only superhero. I mean, like, Black no, Canary, Canary eventually did the comes one in thing. Wrong. Yeah, she did the one thing, which was totally cool, and I'm 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 gl- I was honestly surprised they did it. Uh, but I'm glad they did, and that's cool. And hey, you know what? Like, you could literally do a spin-off Black Canary movie if you wanted to. Yeah. With this character. She's a it, good actress and she did a good job. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what their their concerns are. Uh I, I, we have a comment in the chat that like Justice League tank. No, Justice League didn't tank. Justice League is no. actually successful. Justice League did, did Justice League did not break a billion and WB was like, Oh, the Avengers broke a billion. Why yes. isn't our team? That's what happened with Justice League. Yeah, no, Justice League just performed under expectations, but it did yes. make its money back. Oh, I mean, ma- well, unless it didn't because like the reshoots were basically the cost of a whole other movie. That I'm looking that up right now because I remember I remember like, when that first movie came out, we were all questioning that. Like, did the reshoots blow the budget? They must have. I mean, like, uh, because oh they are. The budget was three hundred million, but it still made six hundred and fifty-seven million. So it did not tank by any means. Well, if you double the marketing budget, it should be six hundred million dollars. So it made like fifty-seven million dollars. That still, it not, still did not tank though. It, still it didn't was tank. Profitable. It, it didn't tank. And I don't, you know, and I'm, I'm, I wasn't a big fan of that movie, so I'm not gonna like defend it. But I will also not say like, yo, DC movies don't do well. Uh, they just don't, they just don't break a billion dollars. Which like, unless, unless you're Aquaman. Um, I, 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 I have a something. Okay, because I forgot about this, and this brings up a good point. Who the hell is in charge of these DC movies marketing? Because right. okay, problem with Harley Quinn is you didn't show enough Harley Quinn. You didn't show actual Birds of Prey. You didn't do anything, right? And we agree. No. And the name's off. Let's go yep. back to Justice League. What was the most boneheaded move they ever did in the marketing that turned people off of the movie? Was it not showing Superman at all? Yes. Yeah. So they've they've already tried th- what they're doing with Harley Quinn, yeah. where they go, "Here's one idea. Oh, it didn't work after we released our million dollar movie." Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's right. After Justice League didn't perform opening weekend. They started putting Superman back in all the posters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this right. literally happened before where they're yeah. like, let's try one cool hipster thing. We'll take Superman out. No one will guess he's coming back. Right. <laughs> Even though we is, all knew that he was coming back. I mean. Right. No, we all knew. But like, yeah. Uh, the, the question is, what was the, what was the, bo- what was the, uh, the cost of, uh, of Birds of Prey? Like how much did Birds of Prey cost? Because, like, uh, I don't know because I'm still trying to find. According to oh, this, okay, the budget okay. was ninety-seven million dollars. Wow! So with reshoots and with the marketing budget, that was horrible, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They their break-even point on Justice League was seven hundred and fifty million. Holy crap! 
Yeah, no wonder they were I mean, upset. I'll agree, okay, by those terms, the movie tanked. The studio lost $60 million on the project. But yeah. who said let's spend $750 million on Justice League? <laughs> no. But even if, I mean, because at that point, you're like, well, we're going to make a billion dollars. Okay, you're only going to make $300 million. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Whose idea was that? For me, like, Birds of Prey cost almost $100 million. $97.1 million. That is <laughs> Too much for birds. For of you prey. to call yeah. it birds of prey, the, I, dude, the movie so should have been. F- if I hand you a grand, one thousand dollars, right? You better. We better have the most on point video ever, titling captions. Like, oh yeah. And I, no, it, I but then I go. Here's ninety seven million to make your movie. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, no. You that forty million dollars, sixty million dollars. You can call it whatever the hell you want. You can you can even drop the birds of prey. Just call it the fabulous, the fantabulous emancipation. The blah 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 blah. Because whatever. Because what was that would have budget. Right, probably less than this. Ninety seven million. Joker yeah. got was sixty two million. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to recreate a time period. <laughs> I know. Uh. I mean, it wasn't hard. You just shoot in Newark. It does. It looks like time forgot. But uh, that being said, you know, Birds of Prey, the, the missteps were all the corporate decisions. Like yep. the story, the characters, the actors, like the, the the setting, the concept, all solid. All like everything worked almost a hundred percent. Like I said, Cassie Kane it was literally just like, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we used a character we have no intention of ever doing anything with in pop culture? Right. So they used the name. That was literally it. Oh, also, I guess with the name, we could probably cast like an Asian person. You know, like that, that was, I think that was the, the, the maximum amount of thought that went into it. Um, with this, it's like, you should have just called her anything. Like you should have called her something else so as to not make other people upset. Except... That technically, Cassie Kane was a Batgirl, and so now there is a Batgirl on the Birds of Prey in the movie. Uh, but, no. I really, really hope that was the rationale behind it. <laughs> I assume it was. And I assume that was like, the, I assume that was the justification for calling her that. But even then, like, that character was like, fine. She did it, whatever. Like, I have no complaints about her as a character. It's just, there were expectations based on the name that they were not anticipating. Yeah. So, all and right. Well, we didn't sing his praises enough, but Ewan McGregor was enchanting. <laughs> oh, he was great. I loved him as Black Mask. He was great. Yeah. I also just saw him in uh, Doctor Sleep. He was great in that too. Uh, oh, I didn't get to see Doctor Sleep. I hear he's great. It's uh, it, you can get it on as a rental now for three bucks on Google Play. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. I got right, some guys. Google bucks. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap up today's episode be- a little earlier than usual. We'll be back to normal next Tuesday. Um, I just I gotta go. I gotta be at a place in about thirty minutes. So thank you guys so much for your support today. Don't forget you can find me over at Comic Story, and he is at Comic Pop. And Dan, where can they find you? At Dan T Producer or Dan T Streamer on Twitch. Thank you, God. Anyway, (laughs) thank you guys so much for your fun today. We're going to end today's episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us comments down below as to what you think about the movie Birds of Prey. And Sal and I are going to hang around here for a few more minutes on the Twitch channel. Don't forget, twitch.tv slash comic story and every Tuesday at about 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, and we'll see you then.